in my cedar pile of logs up by my mill, I've got posts long enough to do for the two front posts. But what I don't have in that pile is a beam long enough to do the front beam uninterrupted. So it needs to be 20 feet long. So I needed to find something. So I searched the forest and wanted to find something that's already either fallen on its own or something that we've cut um, in the process of, of opening up this land down here and making um, trails. So I finally found one that is gonna work, I think. So this guy right here is cedar. We cut it down, I suppose, maybe two years ago to build this trail, our ski trail that we've got. And it's plenty long for 20 feet. It's relatively straight. It does have a taper, of course. Um, can't, really av can't really avoid that. And the other bonus is that it's really close to, relatively close, or the closest one I could find, I should say, to, um, to the sh pole barn shed that I'm building to where it needs to go. So I'm going to use this one. Do these make me look fat? So. To get all of you guys off my back about safety gear, are you happy now? I got some chaps. And because I want you guys to know that safety is my priority out here, Never be too careful. That's how it's done. I think I need to, oh my goodness. Hi, did you go in the mud puddle? Did you? Oh my goodness, a swamp dog. Are you a swamp dog? I don't care what you are, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you're feeling better, yeah. Little doll, little doll's been sick. I think the way I need to do this is by I need to, you know, I don't know else how to do it. There's nothing to hook onto the back here. I wanted to just hook onto the back and pull the log straight out, but there isn't anything and I can't hook anything onto the sides to drag something to bring the chain back and then have something centered. So I think the, there's a hook on the front. So I think I just have to hook on the end and reverse out. I don't have that far to go. It's just a few little turns and straight parts. 
That's manageable, I think.
So I think now that I've got the post in, I can really actually, I left it long because oh, I wanted to give myself as much length as possible just in case. But now that I have it in there, I really can see how, how ridiculously high it is and that I, in order for me to be able to maneuver this log, I need to kind of lift it, like bear hug it and move it around a little bit to get it into its right spot. And the more length I have on there, just the heavier it is. So I think I'm actually gonna take it down and trim it. I'm admittedly struggling. It is so hot here. It's so hot. It's so smoky with all the forest fires. It's a, it's a struggle. Did you see that? Well, what was the penalty I had to pay here? It certainly wasn't taking a two minute rest break in the penalty box, but rather another hour or so of grunt work. Sorry, little pole. We had a rough go. We had a rough go, little pole. I'm sorry. You okay? Do you forgive me? Okay, good. I've just done my best to get where I need to dig this hole. I've done a few different measurements and it's pretty good so it doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> as we well know perfection isn't the name of my game So 
that's like 32 inches there or 83 centimeters. Just like that, it's done. Well, not quite, but you know what I mean. So to make uh, make things go a little bit easier for me, um, Steve helped me get the, a level point with the transit, with the survey transit. So we marked a point here, level, took it over and marked level on the other post. So now I just need to measure from the top down. It's 28 inches, so then I'll add 28 inches onto the other line, and then that's where I'll cut it off with the chainsaw. Oh, I couldn't have done that any better myself. I'm not great at explaining how I'm doing things simply because I'm really just figuring it out as I go and then trying to keep track of that in an organized way is kind of difficult. So bear with me. But I marked a level line on one end. I started at the thicker end of the log and ran a string line all the way to the other end that was level. And this was going to be the way I was going to gauge the depth cut for my beam notch cuts, if that makes sense. I'm not actually sure what they're called, but I think you know what I mean. Because of the taper in the log, they weren't going to be the same depth of cut. This worked well, but I did take the tape measure and measure it up from the bunk to that string line. And on the thinner end of the log, I did adjust it so that it wasn't as deep of a cut, which I do think that I should have left. And it might have been about a half an inch uh, deeper, but I, I raised it up a little bit and I do think that we'll see in the end that that might have um, not worked that well. I sort of have one chance at this. So if I screw this up, I am screwed. So I knew that raising and installing this beam by myself would be difficult. I knew it would be possible, 
but I knew it was going to be challenging. So this took actually quite a long time, at least an hour, I would say, of just readjusting the excavator, readjusting the, um, the strap, fiddling around, as you can see. Having two hands would have been much more productive, but I did find a way to help myself out here, putting some boards up to keep the beam in place as I was trying to get the other end on the post. I did actually have to take the chisel and notch just a skim a little bit off the inside there of the post to get it to fit in snugly. But all in all, those cut those cuts turned out um, pretty good. I was happy about that. Well, I am going to cap it off here, you guys, you guys and girls, girls and gals, ladies and germs, whatever you want to be called, viewers of YouTube channels. <laughs> okay, so you can see, so this has been bothering me. It looks a little bit off. It's a little bit skew. And I think it's a combination of a few things. The first is that I think that it's a bit of an optical illusion that the thinner end of the log is at that side and the thicker end is here and it makes it look like that distance is shorter. There's a smaller gap there because that beam that I just put up is actually like spot on perfectly level. The back one, however, if anything, is still within like acceptable level for me but it's slightly on the other side where it's slightly down a little bit on that side. So that's also contributing to it, making it look a little bit off. So in all honesty, I'm splitting hairs a little bit at this point. Um, but I would rather have it visually look a little bit better. So I am going to actually trim that post just a little bit. I'm going to lift the beam with the machine. Um, and trim it with the, um, the chainsaw and then it will visually match to the back better. Um, I'm out of time to do any of this now. So that's why I wanted to just kind of complete this and get the video done so that you guys can have something. I got to focus on wedding things because the wedding is in two days for my friend. And I will also just uh, tell you guys in the description, I'll, I'll say it now, but they postponed my surgery um, long story short, the, they felt that it was a risk because Steve had recently been in the United States within a few days of my surgery and they thought that I was a COVID risk. That's it for now. Um, I will explain in the description a little bit more about what's happening with my surgery at this point. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoy. That was a lot of work to get to that point, but I'm really glad that, I'm really glad that, um, that part's done. That was the hard part. I will uh, recap kind of the touch-ups that I've done in the, um, in the next video and get the bracing up and move on forward with the rafters. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.